Hi and welcome to the channel. Today we are going to solve a question from this year's J Advance. It is the first multiple choice question of mathematics paper 1. So we are given three sets S, T1 and T2 such that S is equals to A plus B root 2 where A and B are integers and in T1 we have minus 1 plus root 2 to the power n where n is a natural number. Similarly for T2 we have 1 plus root 2 to the power n where n is a natural number. Now we have to state whether the following statements are true or not. Okay, let's focus on the first option. In the first option it says Z union T1 union T2 is a subset of S. So for the Z part, we know that if we put for all the elements of S that have B equals to 0, uh, S will become a set of uh, integers only. So Z is a subset of S. Okay. So now for T1, for the other parts let's observe one thing what I went, uh, wish to say is if we have any number of the form p plus q root 2 and we multiply it with any other number of the form r plus s root 2 where all p, q, r and s are integers so what we get here is let's multiply and found, find out p r plus 2 times of q s in addition with p s plus q r whole multiplied by root 2 so look here, this term over here is an integer since it is the summation of multiplication of integers. Similarly, this term over here is also an integer. So we can basically say it is of the form a plus b root 2. That means it belongs to subset S, sorry set S. So this means that if we multiply any number of the form this one, we will land up in set S. So now look here, what T1 is t1 is equals to minus 1 plus root 2 to the power n that means minus 1 plus root 2 into minus 1 plus root 2 whole multiplied n times right so uh, look here we consider two elements one by one a pair of two elements basically so it will be lying in the set s similarly it will get multiplied by another case where it will be minus 1 plus root 2 it will again lie in set s so we can basically say that t1 is a subset of s similar uh, argument can be made for t2 also so the option a over here is correct now let's look at the second option it states that t1 intersection the open set 0 comma 1 by 2024 is phi that means we cannot get any element in t1 which lies between this values that means that means that t1 is equals to minus 1 plus root 2 to the power n so we cannot get any element let's say for some power k less than 2024 and greater than 0 this is not possible according to the option so let's cross check it look here this term is greater than 0 since root 2 is 1.44 approx would 1.414 approx and minus 1 it will be greater than 0 so any power of it will be greater than 0 then this inequality is satisfied now let's look at the less than part so what we have here is that we can rationalize sorry 1 by 2024 my mistake we can rationalize this and we get 1 by root 2 plus 1 to the power k should be less than 1 by 2024 let's take its inverse it becomes root 2 plus 1 to the power k is greater than 2024 so what it means is that uh, according to the option there can be no k there exists no k such that root 2 plus 1 to the power k should be greater than 2024 but if we look here it's very easy to find any k for k very greater greater than let uh, let me call it 10 lakhs i don't know we are not calculating the exact value but let's say for 10 lakhs we are bound to get it greater than 2024 so the option c is incorrect here now let's look at option c t2 intersection 2024 comma infinity is not phi that means that there lies at least one element in t2 which satisfies the condition that it lies between 2024 and infinity so let's look at here it again what we have is t2 is equals to root 2 plus 1 to the power n where n is a natural number so it says that there is some element of t2 let's call it to the power c which is less than infinity 
and greater than 2024 so it's the similar argument that we made here so this this option is true again now let's look at d option for any given a and b as integers we have this expression cos of pi times of a plus b root 2 plus iota sine pi a plus b root 2 it belongs to integers if and only if b equals to 0 okay so now if this expression has to belong to an integer we know that the imaginary part should be at first 0 so for the imaginary part to be 0 what we get here is pi times of sorry sine of let's write it here sine of pi times of a plus b root 2 should be 0 that means pi times of a plus b root 2 should be of the form n pi where n is an integer that means that a plus b root 2 should be n should be an integer for this value to satisfy b should be 0 and if b is 0 then our real part that is cos of pi plus a plus b root 2 pi times of a plus b root 2 will become cos of a pi where a is an integer so that becomes either plus 1 or minus 1 so the whole expression comes out to be an integer which is plus minus 1 so if uh, so let's look at the reverse approach since it's if and only if if we put b equals to 0 what we get here is plus minus 1 okay so this expression is again uh, this option is also true so that's the answer the answer that comes here is a c and d thanks